Okay guys, it's been a while since I did uh, my last video. Um, I've got some networking equipment here which we're going to take apart. I think this is a for YouTube first. Um, you may have seen this in one of my previous videos. This is um, what's called an, a small form factor transceiver or SFP. And this is a gigabit ethernet uh, transceiver, laser transceiver. So this slips, pops into a suitable switch which takes this SFP transceiver. Uh, and you get um, some fiber optic port there which can be used to communicate over longer distances. This is a what's known as short wavelength or 850 nanometers and it's good for about uh, 300 meters over what's called multi-mode fiber which it means fiber with a core diameter of about 50 or 62 microns. Um, I've now got today some 10 gigabit equipment, and here we go. This is um, one of the first generations of 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, and this is called 10G Base LX4. And of course, the new the new versions um, now come in exactly the same form factor. They're called SFP Plus, but this um, is the, one of the early versions. It's called ZenPack. I believe it's a Cisco proprietary uh, form factor, and in this early generation, um, the, neither the electrical nor the optical pathways could be built to operate at 10 gigahertz. So the question then is, how did they get 10 gigabits a second if you can't get a 10 gigabit per second electrical signal? And they used parallel connections. So um, in this one here, on, on this SFP, there are uh, essentially... Um, a, a receive pair and a transmit pair on here, so it's a full duplex device. On this, there is a four transmit and four receive pairs, and as you can see, if we turn it over and we look at the uh, uh, pinout, you can see it's uh, significantly more complex. And uh, hopefully, you may actually be able to see all the differential pairs there coming out uh, to the pins. So uh, we're going to take this apart and we're going to have a look at how to see how it works. Okay, so let's take a quick closer look at this. So um, this has uh, fibre ports on the front and this actually um, is a multi-mode rather than single mode version. And quite interestingly, this was designed to reduce costs and to allow the use of multi-mode fibre, which has a lower what's called distance bandwidth product. And it's, that's to do with the amount of blurring, a temporal blurring and dispersion that you get with optical fibres. So as you can see, 10G base LX4, um, and it takes multi-mode fibres. And it's got, it uses a different form factor of fibre connector even as this one, but uh, it actually uses the same fibre. So let's have a quick look at the uh, optical input. So on the left, we've got the transmitter. You can see TX on the right, you've got the receiver. Uh, and you can actually see the sort of uh, metal and ceramic ferrules there and maybe you can just about make out the lens on the receiver and uh, it'll probably be a bit of a struggle to uh, see the uh, orifice on the optical fibre because it's so fine on the transceiver side but maybe you can just make out the ceramic um, ferrule there with the central fibre probably too difficult to see, they're too small well, the first thing you notice when you have a, actually have a look at this is actually quite heavy and it's beautifully machined and made. Um, hopefully you can just sort of see the uh, edge there. Lovely heavy duty, heavy cast uh, alloy with spring clips and all sorts of other goodies to make sure that it uh, connects nicely. Obviously, you know, this is quite a high density collector, so uh, precision is required. And, and these, these devices were very, very expensive. I believe they uh, would retail at around about uh, five or 10,000 US dollars when they launched. Um, I picked this up off eBay uh, for a tiny, tiny fraction of 1%. So uh, I got quite a good deal, but they're, they're completely useless. So let's take a quick look at this, take the cover off. So as I said, electrically, this uses um, four channels and they're of 2.5 gigahertz each or well more precisely 3.125 gigahertz or gigabits per second each um, with overhead and um, essentially each uh, pair drives a separate laser module 
So uh, what we can do is we can have a look, and actually you can see uh, immediately this is the uh, transmit side and this is the receive side. You can see there's a whole bunch of differential pairs running from the connector to the laser modules. And actually if we turn this up like that, you should be able to see four individual laser diodes with their associated connectors here and a whole bunch of trim pots here, these tiny, tiny little trim pots. Really incredible. I don't know what size uh, screwdrivers you need to adjust these. And here we've got our uh, photodiode array. Interestingly, all within one just little can um, with a, just a, a, an array of, of outputs there. So obviously this is a, just a sort of single module. And uh, underneath this sort of uh, thermally conductive pad, there is uh, something interesting. This is a so-called Quake Technologies IC, and uh, there's another one in there. Um, I think this is, uh, I, I think it's an ADU or something, probably an analog devices chip, but we'll, we'll look it up uh, in a moment. This is just a quick look at a block diagram from one of the data sheets from this type of device, and you can see um, the optical multiplexer and the multiple lasers at the top, multiple laser drivers and at the bottom, the demultiplexer and multiple photodiodes. Okay, so we've taken the uh, PCB out now. So this uh, thing here is a Quake Technologies uh, QT42A. Uh, I don't know what it is, but Quake Technologies are a fabulous IP company that effectively essentially just design and build custom ASICs uh, and if you uh, look at the the lines you can see here this was where the receivers connected and uh, the, you can see the differential lines to the laser drivers here um, it's obviously some sort of custom signal processing system for level balancing signal cleaning and retiming um, this thing here the AD uh, UC842 is as I suspected, an analog devices chip. It's essentially a microcontroller with multiple precision ADCs and DACs. So presumably this is used to sort of calibrate this uh, custom ASIC um, for the uh, hardware and compensate for aging, tuning, and all that sort of stuff. This presumably is is just um, a uh, an EEPROM or something similar. I can't. It's I can't work out what it is. And on the back, we've got a bit more stuff. So we've got some inductors here. There's obviously some sort of power supply, power voltage regulation going on here. And uh, here we have a, an oscillator, 156.25 megahertz, which is used to drive the 3.125 gigahertz uh, signal clock. Uh, and a few bits and bobs, capacitors and stuff, odd transistors and stuff, probably related to power for the laser drivers. And uh, we've got the rest of the module here. If we put that out of the way. So it all comes apart very nicely as you expect for a high end device. The uh, photodiode and laser modules um, are seen quite nicely here. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to pull those out. Okay, so this is the photodiode module. Um, as you can see, a whole bunch of uh, differential lines on there and uh, just the uh, sort of uh, connector orifice there. Now, there are four laser or receivers in here and they're of um, closely spaced wavelengths. So you've got one at centered at uh, 1,275 nanometers, one at 1,300, one at 1,325 and one at 1,350 nanometers. Um, so there's presumably there's some sort of prismatic or dispersion optics or maybe, I don't know, maybe a diffraction grating, I don't really know, um, in here to separate the uh, laser signal into the four wavelengths. And uh, let's see if we can take a look at the laser module here. So we've got the laser module, which is a big long tube, and if we just, there's a bit of flex connecting to the individual drivers, you can see it's just a sort of sealed metal box. Uh, and we've got this horrendously complicated looking PCB with multiple bits of flex running to the, the laser 
and there's a bit of heat sink grease on there which is just causing a bit of a mess. Oh well. So let's just focus up on that. So we've got our laser drivers here which um, are labelled 3735AE. Um, we'll look that up in a bit and you can see all the little calibration uh, potentiometers there. I mean these are absolutely tiny. I mean they're probably three millimeters across um, and you've got one obviously a pair of, of, of potentiometers and uh, for each laser driver going to each uh, individual laser module. Let's see if we can get in. Okay, okay so we've got into the laser module. Um, so you can see each of the four laser diodes here and if we look really carefully, and I know it's difficult to see, um, you can see a tiny little mirror at 45 degrees immediately in front of each laser diode. And there is a little groove cut in the metal of the uh, module. And the, these are obviously little half-silvered mirrors or dichroic mirrors precisely tuned for the wavelength of each laser diode. So the light beam will come out of the diode, reflect off the mirror, and come down towards the uh, optical orifice. And uh, again, the next one will come down, it will hit its mirror, and it will, ref and it will reflect this way. And if the mirror is tuned to precisely the wavelength of the diode uh, and is made using a dichroic process, then it will not reflect the light coming from the other diodes. So essentially they all pile up and we get four beams coming down this uh, orifice down towards your fibre. Presumably the, the receiver is the same, but it looks like it's welded shut, and that's going to be quite difficult to get into. And this is just another closer look at the uh, laser diode module and the mirrors. Okay, and uh, here we've got the laser transmitter. Um, this is the uh, one gigabyte SFP transceiver, partially disassembled, and here's the receiver module for the uh, receiver photodiode assembly for the 10 gig system. So that's quite interesting. Um, surprisingly complicated, you know, especially when you've got to deal with four uh, laser modules, and uh, it's quite interesting how they've done this. I hadn't thought uh, before taking this thing apart about the use of dichroic mirrors. Uh, but that's quite interesting. And uh, clearly, in terms of the uh, integration of the electronics, we've, got a, um, we've gone quite far with the new small form factor devices. So uh, it looks uh, quite interesting. Um, if anyone is interested um, and you want to, say, do something like disassemble this uh, chip and get some die photos, uh, I'm quite happy to send you the board. Um, if you want to take it apart, see how many layers it is and so on. Uh, let me know and I'll uh, send it uh, to you anywhere uh, you want. Um, if anyone wants to have a look at the laser uh, photodiode module and see how that works, if they think they can get into it, it's uh, spot welded um, on the edges. I don't know if you can see that at all. Um, it's spot welded on the edges. Um, if you want to get into it and uh, think you can without destroying it and uh, so we can see how it works, uh, I'll be delighted to send you that. Um, so there you go, quite interesting, quite complicated, obviously this use of four laser modules and uh, four photodiodes makes things very complex, but I suppose uh, when the alternative is 10 gigabit uh, signalling that's a problem. Um, in terms of the latest standards there's a similar issue with the use of 100 gigabit ethernet and um, the, the designers, current designs currently use 10 channels at 10 gigabits each. Um, which are then modulated onto either 10 or, in some exceptional cases, four laser diodes, but it's usually 10 laser diodes. And there is, in fact, um, you can get um, 100 gigabit Ethernet over copper cables, but it's um, 10 pairs in each direction, and it will go about 20 feet, um, about 10 metres or so, 7 metres, I think, um, with a 40 conductor. Uh, 20 pair twisted cable so it's completely impractical and I'm told that one uh, port at 100 gigabit is around about 50,000 US dollars so uh, it's quite expensive but uh, you know in time I'm sure it will get cheaper um, that's all for today 
um, have a nice weekend.